Hello, and welcome back to Zim Tutorials for Adobe Animate. I'm Dr. Abstract. In the last tutorial, we took a look at how to make a pane. So here it is, where we entered our name, Dr. Abstract. And we hit submit, and it played a sound, a boom sound. Uh, but I would like to blow up an asteroid. Like, why am I, I don't know, why am I blowing up my name? But we did see how to set up the pane so that when we started the game, we can play a sound. Because that's one thing, you've got to interact with an app before the sound play, uh, before you can play a sound. Otherwise you get an error. That's kind of a new thing. We had that around in mobile for quite some time. And then it went to the internet, uh, which is, uh, well, to the desktop as well. It's going to go, okay, fine. So annoying, huh? Wouldn't it be nice to just play some background sound before... Uh, the user interacts, but uh, they, they just don't want you playing sound. The users, it's a user experience issue, kind of. It's a half, one of those half dozen, six of the other, something like that. It is also a user experience, and I have to hit start game. You know, that's it's kind of annoying. Uh, but people just don't like it when sound um, appears in their ear, I guess, when they go to a website. So fine, we're stuck with it now. All right, let's uh, remake this kind of. Uh, well, we can remake it in an easier manner by copying it. So file, save as. I'm still without internet. I'm doing a series of these tutorials without the internet. Actually from number nine on, I think, or something like that. And we'll call this number 17. Wow, and we'll call it a sprite. We haven't seen a sprite yet. Uh, 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 no, okay, good. So save. Uh, there's a couple ways that we can do sprites, and you guys may or may not know about sprites. I can't remember how Adobe Animate is very much like a movie clip where it will play uh, pictures uh, at a frame rate. So without Adobe Animate, we would use these things called sprite sheets and sprites, and that's what I'm showing you. It will play an animated picture as opposed to tween animations, which uh, we can do with Zim Animate, or you can do in Adobe as well, obviously, Adobe Animate. Excellent for doing animations. Um, all right, so we're gonna simplify this a little bit. First of all, we'll call it number 17 and we will call it sprites. So we'll want to load uh, frame.assets. We'll want to load some stuff. One thing will be the boom. So let's add the boom. When we're complete, we will do all this stuff. It's important with the sprite sheet that we preload the sprite sheet. So that's why I'm bringing back our preloading stuff. However, all this stuff is a bit of a mess inside here. We will keep the audio for the boom. The pane will keep two, but I think I'll go back to the width. Uh, let's simplify this a little bit. I don't need any of that stuff. Except maybe the play, but let's that hard. Just put that there for now. Display closed. Nah, we don't need that. And all of this stuff can go. As a matter of fact, uh, the whole pain thing can just become a pain that is the stage width plus 100 so that we get rid of those corners and then a height of whatever 150. And we will say start game and we will Although actually, if we're exploding an asteroid, we don't even need a pane, but we might have some background sound as well that we want to play. So usually when we have a game, we have background sound. So we'll start with a pane. Doesn't matter. Okay, start game, and we'll make this our yellow. Oh, different color. Pink. Purple. I think the next parameter is the text color of it. So hopefully um, that means if we say white, that might look all right. Let's have a look. Boom.play, we don't want to do yet. We want to do it in this arrow function. So when we do a show, here's the callback for when uh, we close the pane. That's the little trick here. If you if you don't like the looks of that, and I don't blame you, but uh, you could do this, show and knit, okay? And you see that? So we're saying what function to call when we close it. So we're gonna show it when we close it, this is the callback. So then this becomes function init or start game or whatever it is. And then this stuff goes in here. Boop. All right, or you could have used an arrow function in there. 
as we did. Function literal as well would work, but we tend to like the arrow function these days. So there we go. Got it. There's the pane. It'll be back to a purple pane this time when we then we're going to show it. And there's a callback for when it closes. Uh, control enter. There it is. Boom. There's the play. OK, so actually, we, we don't really want to boom at that time. We want to show the asteroid <laughs> and then boom. Uh, right. You know, why, why do we even have this pain anyway? The pain was for the backing sound. I could probably go find a backing sound. <clears throat> but whatever. If we had a backing sound, we could play it now. And we want to show the asteroid at this point. So, is there an asteroid around? Hello, asteroid! Uh, we're back to this, huh? Let's see. Animate. Pop. Uh, tutorials. And assets. So, if we had a backing sound... Well, we got warble. What does that sound like? <laughs> That'd be pretty annoying as a backing sound. Over and over again. <laughs> Space flight. Although, you know what? That's kind of a nice sound to play just as we close the, pa the, the pane. That's not bad. We can make the asteroid animate into that. So there, there's the asteroid. Why don't we change the name of this? Rename. Oh, look at my little icons here. Hmm. Rename, is that it? Rename. And we will call it asteroid. Although asteroid's a funny word. It's got an E in it. And I found that a lot of people done a lot of tutorials with asteroids. A lot of people um, keep spelling it asteroid without the E. I think I'm spelling it right. So anyway, there's a, it's a puny little asteroid too. It's like, oh my God, why do we make such a small asteroid? And here we have a sprite sheet. This is what a sprite sheet looks like. This one happens to be a regular sprite sheet where it's in rows and columns like a grid. Uh, I guess those are invisible ones there. So this is a sprite sheet. Sometimes sprite sheets are packed in with texture packer. Maybe we can show you that in the next tutorial though. We, we've just launched, if I had internet, I would show you that. Um, just launched this uh, mini page or no, mini site that is a page <laughs> called Interactive Animation. And in that we talk a lot about sprites. And so that would be a good place for you to look in the, on the Zim page, Interactive Animation it's called. Anyway, that's a sprite sheet. One thing that we can do while we've got it open is count the columns and the rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight by one, two, three, four, five, six. So eight by six. And we do have asteroid PNG and we've got warble. Okay, so let's add these. So now we have to turn this into an array. Oh, for crying out loud. Um warble.mp3 comma and what else do we have comma asteroid.png and was it boom.png was that what the the other thing there was called oh uh, did i really close the folder i did yeah 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 Mad, no, not imagine. Uh, animate. Hmm. Tutorials. Assets. You're probably sitting there. Yeah, it was Boom PNG. Uh, don't worry about it. Okay, won't close that, just in case. Boom PNG. Asteroids.png. Asteroid boom MP3 and Warble. Uh, if you've got a lot of assets like this, Zim's got an asset tool. You can just go out to it and point to a directory and select all the assets you want and then save and it just makes this thing for you right here great so there's all of our assets that means here instead of boom.play we're going to play our warble we'll just play it once so a new odd called warble mp3.play so you're welcome to just do that as well but that makes a sound object and plays it if we're going to do this more than once, then store the sound object. We're going to boom it more than once, possibly. I don't know, maybe. Uh, so that that way we stored it, made one sound object, and just play that. But we don't want to play the boom, boom yet. I'll comment that out. We want to play the warble and introduce the asteroid. New pick. Um, asteroid. Look at me spell it. <laughs> the beginning right. Dot PNG. And we'll dot center that. And we can animate it in if we want, but for now, let's just have a look. Start game. <laughs> God. Why? 
Why did I pick such a small asteroid to show you? <laughs> it's so lame. Usually you got a nice big asteroid. Uh, so my apologies there. Mini asteroid. All right, so be it. It's centered. If we wanted to animate that in, dot alp, we'll start with the alpha of zero. This is one way to do it. Dot animate and uh, alpha colon one. Oh, well, we could do the scale as well. But anyway, this animates it in. Okay. And we should put it in black as well. What the heck is this asteroid doing on light? So how do we set it to be black? Can we just set this to be black? Black. Here we go. And start. The Ooh, asteroid. <laughs> it doesn't doesn't really wobble, does it? Let's um, set the scale to zero dot ska zero, and we'll animate in the alpha and the scale. I uh, wish we could go to two, but we'll just animate into one. We should also kind of make it warble. We've dealt with this before. So I'm, I'm needing to get to the ease. Can we do it? Let's drop this down a bit. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Okay, so we're animating, and we'll start with a squiggly bracket there. Oh, God. Uh, I'm really at odds. I, I use Adam, and Adam is quite at odds with how brackets and stuff like that work. Um, Flash is great, or animate. This animates good. Um, if you start a bracket, it doesn't finish it until you hit enter, then it finishes it or something like that. Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. I'm not exactly sure when it does and when it doesn't. But anyway, so it's like erg, bracket hell. So these are the props. Um, this is the time, but uh, let's make it a little bit longer than time of two seconds because that sound is playing for um, you know, a little bit of time as well. And then we will make the ease colon. This is the important one. Uh, elastic out, although usually don't elastic the alpha. So let's get rid of the alpha. If we're making it a scale of zero, that'll be fine. Elastic out, so that means it will elastic on the end. And here we, this is what we got now. You ready? Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> About the left hand side of it. Uh, center reg. Okay, so we make sure that the registration points in the center as we add that. Okay, it, it's a small asteroid, but it's a really cool asteroid because it wobbles. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> okay, or warbles in. Hello, I'm an asteroid. It's like an asteroid that's just arrived through hyperspace or something. <laughs> hyperspace asteroids. All right, so when we press on that, we don't want to tap. So we don't want to tap on the asteroid because that would be a down and an up. And that's no good for exploding asteroids. <laughs> you want to explode the asteroid as soon as you touch it. I'm sorry. So const asteroid is equal to that. And then you pick there. And then what we can say is asteroid dot on mouse down. So as soon as we mouse down on that, that'll work on mobile as well. Then we call this arrow function. And in there, hey, in there is where we want to boom it. Excellent. And we also want to not only boom it, but hide it possibly or make it go away. So that is asteroid dot remove from. We could animate it out too, but I think once we get the explosion on there, It'll be just fine, stage.update. Once we get the explosion on there, we won't need a stage.update for now, uh, but for now we might need the stage.update because we made a change uh, later on. So we go like this, there's our asteroid. Oh, I don't have a cursor, but I click it. It says boom, uh, and it, it hides. Okay, so it has no finger, we should add a finger. The way we add a finger is .cur. We could put any HTML or any CSS cursor in here but by default, it's the cursor that we want, which is, well, you know what? Could always possibly, I don't know if the finger is the best. Do you, do you go out in space with your finger and go, I'm gonna touch this asteroid? Maybe a crosshair would be better. 
cross hair. I don't know if it's hairs. It should be cross hairs, I think. <coughs> it's not. It's cross hair. Uh, I haven't used a cross hair cursor in quite some time. No, it is. Okay, so ah, dun 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 dun. Okay, great. But where is our animation, huh? Where's our Where's our um, big explosion boom thing? We want to make our sprite. So probably best to make the sprite once and run the sprite whenever we need it. So that would look like this. Uh, const explosion is equal to a new sprite. We pass in the sprite, which I think we can do just do as a string now. In all previous examples, it used to be we would put in a picture here. Um, so this would be a new pick and the name of the ash, uh, the name of the boom. But in just recently, I think we were harried into uh, making that just the string version of it. <laughs> Fine, and we did. So now what the sprite does is it says, oh, did you pass in a, sp a, uh, a string for the name of the file? And if so, then I'll look for an asset, a pick that's called that. So there we go. That's our explosion, but we have to say the calls in rows. Do you remember? I think it was eight by six or something like that. All right, great. There's our explosion sprite made, but down here we need to add it. So what we can do is we can say explosion dot loc. We can locate the explosion at the asteroid. Uh, actually that might mean that we need to center the reg. So, um, yeah, the sprite is going to be top left corner registration, and if we locate it, it's going to put the top left corner at the uh, where the asteroid is. So we want the registration point in the center. Here's another way to do that. It's definitely not it. Reg, round brackets, and then we say center. Uh, if we said center reg, we'd run into a problem because center reg will add it at this time. So as soon as we start, it's going to center reg it. There is a parameter in the center reg. It's like the fifth parameter that says false. Or if you say false, it won't add it. But that's the old way and a longer way of doing it, more complicated way. Yeah, probably what's best is just to set the registration point in the center using our handy reg center. All right. So uh, that should be good. Note, uh, we're locating the explosion at the asteroid uh, before we remove the asteroid, which is... Oh, and we want to run it, though. So that's... We're locating it, and we want to run it. I think one second will probably be good. We go Control-Enter, and we press on the asteroid. Oh, my God. Did you think that was going to work? Uh, I think I still see a bit of asteroid or uh, explosion stuff. There. Yeah, so uh, the last frame still has some uh, asteroid left in it. So once, uh, whatever. Once once it's finished running, we'll get a. Comp uh, well, I can put it right in here, I guess. So that squiggly. So that doesn't give me the second squiggly yet, until I hit enter. And then it does. Okay, so that's what's confusing me. I, I like that, but half the time I put in a squiggly and it makes the other squiggly, or does it never? I don't know. I swear there were times when it does, or is it a round bracket does that? Okay, round brackets give me both, arrays give me both, but squigglies wait. Okay, I think I see. Uh, in Adam, the squigglies give me both as well. Um, okay, so we're going to run it, and then here is the callback, and in the callback, we will call this arrow function, and just hide the sprite, I suppose. So the sprite was called explosion dot remove from. We don't want to dispose it. <laughs> Very fancy. Explosion dot remove from. Okay, so what this is doing is when it runs it, run is very much like animate animate. So you can do all of the things that um, animate does. For instance, if we wanted to loop it, this would look silly, but we could loop colon true. <coughs> Excuse me, at which point there would be no callback. 
but uh, watch what happens when we loop true. And this is what's amazing about Zim is uh, uh, for sprites, we can specify the time, we can rewind the sprite, we can loop it, we can wait, we can call back here, we can call back when we rewind. We can, so all of the functionality of animate is inside, or Zim animate is inside of the sprite. So here it is looping now. Unfortunately, it didn't loop the sound, but you could add that if you wanted to by um, saying loop call and then play the sound in the loop call. You want to see? Uh, loop call colon play the do run this arrow function right here. See how handy the arrow function is? And then inside here we can say boom dot play. Da 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 I can just imagine what this is going to sound like if we did it right. I don't need the comma. All right, ready to start the game? We don't even have to, oh yeah, we have the warble sound. Warble sound! Okay, it could be a little bit faster. Shut up! All right, <laughs> so anyway, we don't want to do that. Um, we don't want to loop. But we do want to remove the explosion or the sprite once it's finished, because uh, I, I saw a little shading of it. I, I don't know if you saw it, but that, that, that's how you can do that. However, let's make it come back again. So we're going to remove it in this call here, but why don't we make the um, thing come back again, and then we can do it again. I like exploding it. So here, that would just be a timeout, for instance, timeout. So there's the Zim timeout, and we say how long? Three seconds, two seconds. Call this arrow function. How did I get an extra bracket there? Okay. I don't know. I know I can trust that. Um, so after a timeout, what do we need to do? Show the asteroid again. And so that's aster. Well, we can animate in the asteroid again. Well, we don't quite need it because of the, well, we could play the sound too. Okay. So copy that stuff and paste it in here. Put the uh, name of it, Ast Asteroid. So asteroid.animate, we're going to bring the scale. Uh, we also have to, so we should set the scale Scott, to zero. We have to add it again, don't we? Dot add two. It's already centered, so that'll be in the right place. So there's our asteroid. We're saying, please add it to the stage again, but it'll have a scale of zero, so we won't see it right away. However, we'll animate in the scale, and if we're doing the elastic thing again, <coughs> we might want to run the warble. Oh, darn. Okay, so here we cause to warble is equal to. That's fine. Um, so we make it once, just out here, and then down inside of wherever we were, just as we're showing our asteroid again, we play it. Okay, so play the warble after two seconds, uh, then call the asteroid again. I think we're good to go. I think that will just keep on letting us explode that asteroid. What a game! Ah, uh, brilliant! One, two. Oh, oh, it's another asteroid. Oh, one, two. Whoa, hey, cool, it's another asteroid. All right, wow. How much fun is that? We're, we're good at this game. Keep on hitting that asteroid. All right, so this is... <laughs> How are you doing? That was, a, that was a bit of a haul, wasn't it? Um, yeah, oh, that's all right. We're At least we're in under half an hour. So what we did, just a brief summary, is we loaded in our assets, and that's kind of important for the sprite because now we're ready for the sprite sheet. It's complicated making a sprite. Thing is, sprite's an object. We can't make the sprite if we don't have the, the picture for it. So uh, we can't just sort of recall it. In other cases, we can, <clears throat> if we have a sprite and we're centering it, uh, the sprite is actually, or sorry, if we have a picture and we're centering it and we haven't loaded the picture yet, the picture is actually a container. 
And so we load the picture into the container. We can do that after, and still it's we're dealing with the same object. But uh, here it's not quite the same deal. We're, we've assigned this sprite to a variable. We can't... Um, the picture inside is the sprite, or it's part of the sprite, so we can't uh, do the lazy loading on it. At least we haven't figured out a way. So this boom needs to be loaded before we run this. <clears throat> With the pain, it probably would have been, you know, because we've got we've got this delay. But uh, whatever, we don't really need the pain. And the only reason we have the pain was for that warble. You want to see it without the pain? It would be something like this. <clears throat> Comment all this stuff out. You guys were saying, "Oh, but we were finished. We were nearly there." Uh, and which one was the pain? That's framed on. So this is the end of. End of, oh no, that is the end of the load assets. Okay, that's the end of the load assets, right? This must have been the, <coughs> excuse me. That must have been the knit and the pane. Okay, this will probably work. It just animated in, didn't do the warble. There it is, and when it animates in, hmm, maybe a bit of a boo-boo there. So, there it is, see? And we, we're interacting with it, so we're, we're able to play the explosion and interacting with it. I'm not sure we're getting some error, probably. Warble's not defined. Okay, right. So we had <coughs> commented that out, then I didn't need to, really. But as mentioned, we... Oh, right, I was summarizing. But as mentioned, we like um, having the pain there if we're starting a game, because we probably have some background sound we want to play anyway. So we use the pane from the last tutorial. We then called the init when it's done, or you could have put all of this stuff in a, an arrow function right in there. But sometimes if it's a whole app that's going to be going, I like calling the function init. It's just a little bit easier. If you wanted to, you could have called that start app. <clears throat> and it's what we use in the coding world. Ooh, how to get a square bracket in there. <clears throat> Goodness gracious, who knows if we have the right number of bat brackets now. I don't think so. Okay, so there's start app, and uh, we could have called it start app there if we wanted to. Sometimes if the whole app is going to go inside of an arrow function, inside of a show callback, <laughs> so it's kind of nicer to have it out here. All right, um, we played a sound, which we had to interact with. We closed the pane to interact with. We played the sound. We brought in a sprite. This is one way to do a sprite. There's a slightly more complicated way, but not really, where it's packed in. Texture Packer will do that, for instance, and we can show you that in the next tutorial, for instance. Uh, great. We center regged that so that the explosion and the asteroid, which is also center regged, will, when we locate them on top of one another, they'll match. So where do we locate them on top of one another? Hmm. Well, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Uh, asteroid pick. We wanted to do that when we exploded. So that would be on a mouse down. So looking for our mouse down. There's our mouse down. Boom dot play. Ah, there it is. Explosion dot look. Okay, so we located the asteroid. If they're both center regged, that locates nicely. When we do mouse down on that, we're running something, and the run is very much like um, a Zim animate run. So it's got a call parameter if we want. Do you want to, uh, the time is in here too, so that, that might be important for you. Time of one is the default, but if we went 0.5, then it would run it really slow or really quickly. Okay, did you like that? You, oh, I could have seen it again without refreshing. Did you like that better? I don't know, maybe. Not quite, though. I think one's good. And if it came back, what if it were two seconds? So this is how you change the speed of the sprite. <laughs> nice, kind of slow-mo. All right, that's too slow. So I'm happy, actually, with a time of one. Default. 
uh, we removed the, the, the sprite. We, after a timeout, we brought it back again. We animated it back in. And when did we asteroid remove from? Uh, right, okay, yeah, right away. And we don't need the stage that update anymore. Because the animation here that's happening will update the stage automatically. All right, great. Uh, I think we're all done. And tidy up some of these semicolons, but that's no big deal. And yay, we don't need the assets path. Okay, good, because it's right in here. Looks nice. Let's save her up and say goodbye. Goodbye, you guys. I'm Dr. Abstract. Hopefully we're having fun. <laughs> uh, if you have been enjoying these tutorials, you're welcome to let us know at zimjs.com slash slack, zimjs.com slash discord. We'd love to see you there. Uh, I've done, uh, it's been the last, I don't know, last 10, last, I don't know, something like that, eight, eight of these tutorials while my internet's been down. Uh, technician coming tomorrow. So I expect um, we'll be back to being able to show you some live examples out there in the world. But, uh, you know, whatever, at least this give me something to do to make these tutorials when I don't have internet. <clears throat> uh, why did I say that? <laughs> I'm not sure. Anyway, good night. Bye-bye. <laughs>